this is an egg laying caddis version of an uh, elk hair caddis and actually in this case we have deer hair for the wing so it's a deer hair uh, caddis uh, but as far as it being an egg laying caddis you can see there's a little green ball in the back which represents the uh, egg sacs when the caddises are dancing on the surface of the water uh, laying their eggs um, in front of that the uh, the body the body dubbing is uh, just a tan um, or a light brown color um, just a a nice ginger color uh, hackle and um, the wing is like I said in this case uh, deer hair. Hook is going to be size 16 dry fly hook. Get started here this is a 6 aught thread 8 aught might be a little bit uh, better when I get to the front there but I like having the little extra strength um, with the uh, the six aught rather than the eight aught, so we go back to the rear pretty far here. I'm just going to take some green dubbing, spin it onto the thread. I need too much, and then we're just going to make a little ball of uh, dubbing as we wrap. So you want to make um, side by side and almost uh, X wraps, meaning the crisscross over yourself. It doesn't have to be a perfect ball, you really just need to add a little bit of color. Next I'm going to add in uh, what I'm going to use for ribbing to protect the hackle. This is going to be a two pound monofilament. And this just happens to be a uh, maxima, uh, so that's why it's brown. I usually use a clear, but I don't think uh, <clears throat> either or matters. Next we're going to tie in the dry fly hackle, the saddle. It's already been prepared. these guys tied in. As you can see I left some room up at the front um, for the head. It's a little bit extra room but I just have it uh, set aside so I know where to stop the body. Get a lighter colored dubbing, spin that on the thread. Don't need too much, you just want this body real real sparse. Nice and thin. Get up to the front, stop there. Then I'm going to take this hackle and instead of wrapping it the direction I'm wrapping the thread, I'm going to wrap it the opposite direction. So I'm going to wrap it towards me instead of away from me. Four or five turns, it's good. Trim off these extra hairs. Trim the stem. Save the feather for another fly. Get some of these hairs out of the way. And then I like to trim all the fibers on the bottom off the fly. The reason I do that is I like the way um, the fly sits on the water when um, it'll sit flat almost all the time that way instead of rolling on its side. Now I can take that two pound uh, monofilament ribbing and then I can wiggle it back and forth as I go through the hackle so I don't mash too many of the hackles down. Now don't worry about keeping it pretty, it's okay if it's all you know, messed up looking. I think that actually looks a little bit better than it being perfect. Tie off that ribbing. So it's a bit messy looking, but it's leggy. It's buggy. And it has, um, you know, just a fishy look to it. Next is to add in the wing, which is going to be deer hair. I already prepared the deer hair. It's already been in a hair stacker. I cut it off the skin, uh, combed the body fur out, the under fur out, and uh, even the tips in the, the hair stacker. Give it a couple more shakes since they're a little, a little uneven. A little better. This batch is a little unruly for some reason. And 
it's pretty good. I'll pick out a couple of the stray ends there. Not that I think it would matter. So I want that to go just past the uh, bend of the hook, just a little bit. So I'm going to pinch this on top, wedge the thread back between my fingers. It's a pinch loop technique. It gives you a soft loop. Come all the way underneath in the same spot, then pull straight up. That should bind those fibers right down on the top of the hook. And do another soft loop over, underneath soft, and pull straight up. And there will be a couple stray ones here and there. One or two more turns to secure it. Then what I like to do to make it real strong, so I'll cut these fibers a little bit long at the head. And I'll mash them out with my thumb. And now what I like to do is wiggle my way through it with the thread. So I'm binding down some of those fibers as I work forward. And that'll make the fly that much more stronger. And it should also help prevent it from spinning around the body as well. Finish with one three turn whip finish. Do one more. Trim off this excess. Fold some of these fibers back forward. Just give it another little, a little trim. Not much, just bringing it back into proportion. So you don't get as pretty as a head um, as a traditional elk hair caddis, but I prefer wrapping through those fibers just because it makes the fly that much more stronger and you get to use it that much longer. So another great caddis fly to use during the spring when the caddises are hatching. Put a little floating on there, or if you don't use that, use one of those uh, Amadou pads. The uh, It's like a mushroom skin. Anytime the fly gets wet or fishy, use that Amadou pad, squish it on either side of the fly, mash it in there. comes out pretty darn dry. You'll be able to fish for quite a few uh, more casts after that. Good luck. Tight lines.